in research there is need to make distinction between various kinds of variables there are many classification given for variables we will try to understand only the dependent variables and the independent variables independent variable the variables which are manipulated or controlled or changed these are also known as manipulated variables researchers often mistake independent variables and assume that it is independent of any manipulation it is called independent because variable is isolated from any other factor in research we try to determine whether there is a cause and effect relationship in fact when you are looking for some kind of relationship between variables you are trying to see if the independent variable causes some kind of change in the other variable or dependent variable and uh, now we are going to discuss what is dependent variable dependent variables are the outcome variables and are the variables for which we calculate statistics the variables which change on account of independent variables is known as dependent variables it is something that depends on the other factors for example a test score could be dependent variable because it could change depending on the several factors such as how much you studied how much sleep you got the night before you took the test or even how hungry you were when you took it usually when you are looking for a relationship between the two things you are trying to find out what makes the dependent variables change the way it does as we have discussed that a variable is an image perception or concept that can be measured hence capable of taking on different values the variables that you wish to explain are regarded as dependent variables or criterion variables the other variables expected to explain the change in the dependent variables is referred to as an independent variable or predictor variable the dependent variable is the expected outcome of the independent variable an independent variable produces dependent variable so variables can have three types of relationship among themselves a positive relationship is one where an increase in one would lead to increase in the other for example more you study higher your score would be a negative relationship is one where an increase in one variable leads to decrease in the other more you watch tv less marks you are going to get a zero relationship is one which shows no significant relationship between the two variables uh, for example having any kind of food will not uh, fetch you marks these are the type of relationship which variables have so once we have understood variables we can discuss the various types of hypothesis one the first one is the research hypothesis the research hypothesis could be understood in terms of simple research hypothesis and complex research hypothesis a simple research hypothesis predicts the relationship between a single independent variable and a single dependent variable whereas a complex hypothesis predicts the relationship between two or more independent variable and two or more dependent variable a research hypothesis must be stated in a testable form for its proper evaluation and it should indicate a relationship between variables in clear concise and understandable language research hypotheses are classified as being directional or non directional a directional hypothesis are usually derived from theory they may imply that the researcher is intellectually committed to a particular outcome they specify the expected direction of the relationship between variables that is the researcher predicts not only the existence of a relationship but also its nature non directional hypothesis on the other hand are used when there is a little or no theory or when findings of previous studies are contradictory they may imply impartiality do not stipulate the direction of the relationship as uh, another uh, types of associations are associative hypothesis and causal hypothesis associative hypothesis propose relationship between variables when one variable changes the other changes they do not indicate cause and effect whereas the causal hypothesis propose a cause and effect interaction between two or more variables the independent variable is manipulated to cause effect on the dependent variables then there is a statistical hypothesis to test whether the data support or refute the research hypothesis it needs to be translated into a statistical hypothesis it is given in statistical terms in the context of inferential statistics it is statement about one or more parameters that are measures of the population under study now we need to understand what is this inferential statistics inferential statistics is used for drawing conclusion about population values to use inferential statistics we need to translate the research hypothesis into a testable form 
which is called the null hypothesis. A testable hypothesis contains variables that are measurable or able to be manipulated. They need to predict a relationship that can be supported or not supported based on the data collection and analysis. So, now we come to a very important types of hypothesis which is called as null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis are used when the researcher believes that there is no relationship between two variables or when there is inadequate theoretical or empirical information to state a research hypothesis. The null hypothesis represents a theory that has been put forward either because it is believed to be true or because it is to be used as a basis for argument, but has not been proved. Ha uh, this has serious outcome if incorrect decision is made and null hypothesis is designated by either HO or HN. Uh, null hypothesis can be simple or complex or associative or causal which we have already seen. The alternative hypothesis is a statement of what a hypothesis test is set up to establish. It is designated by H1 or HA. It is opposite of null hypothesis. It is only reached if HO is rejected. Frequently alternative is actual desired conclusion of the researcher. We give special consideration to the null hypothesis. This is due to the fact that the null hypothesis relates to the statement being tested. Whereas, the alternative hypothesis relates to the statement to be accepted if when the null is hypothesis rejected. The final conclusion once the test has been carried out is always given in terms of the null hypothesis. We either reject null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis or do not reject uh, null hypothesis. We never conclude reject alternative hypothesis or even accept alternative hypothesis. If we conclude do not reject null hypothesis, this does not necessarily mean that the null hypothesis is true. It is only suggest, it only suggests that there is not sufficient evidence against null hypothesis in favor of alternative hypothesis. Rejecting the null hypothesis then suggests that the alternative hypothesis may be true. For example, alternative hypothesis is the males visited cinema more than females and the null hypothesis is the males and females do not differ in respect of the frequency of seeing cinema. So, alternative hypothesis is usually the one which one wishes to prove and the null hypothesis is the one which one wishes to disapprove. And now, once we are done with the types of hypothesis, let us understand how hypothesis is formulated because that is the most important concept in research. There are no precise rules for formulating hypothesis and deducing consequences but there are some difficulties that arise in formulating the hypothesis. However, there are certain necessary conditions that are conducive to the formation. They are for example, richness of background knowledge. In the absence of knowledge concerning a subject matter, one can make no well founded judgment of relevant hypothesis. Background knowledge is essential for perceiving relationship among the variables and to determine what finding other researcher have reported on the problem under study new knowledge, new discoveries and new inventions should always form continuity with the already existing corpus of knowledge and therefore, it becomes all the more essential to be well versed with the already existing knowledge. Hypothesis can be formulated correctly by person who have rich experience and uh, academic background, but they can never be formulated by those who have poor background knowledge. There is another point which is very important in formulating hypothesis is logical and scientific approach. Formulation of proper hypothesis depends on one's experience and logical insights. Hypothesis does not have a clear cut and definite theoretical background. Partly it is a matter of lifting upon an idea on some problem and it is not always possible to have complete information of an acquaintance with the scientific method for formulating hypothesis. This lack of scientific knowledge presents difficulty in formulation of hypothesis. A researcher may begin a study by selecting one of the theories in his own areas of interest and deduce a hypothesis from this theory through logic which is possible only when the researcher has a proper understanding of the scientific method and has a versatile intellect. At times, conversations and consultations with colleagues and experts from different fields are also helpful in formulating important and useful hypothesis. 